This is Lauren Grow-Wargo of Fair Fight. I'm happy to give you this Fair Fight tutorial today on some important tips for the democracy heroes of the runoff, the poll workers, poll observers, door knockers, and activists out there making our democracy work. Election season means that there are a lot of folks hiding behind their computers with Twitter fingers, trying to talk tough, and trying to keep our democracy from working. Please. We know that regular Georgians actually have the power and our right to vote and our civic engagement activities are protected by law and from these anonymous tough guys and all kinds of online or in-person threats. So know your rights and protect yourself. If you're working the polls or knocking doors for your favorite candidates, the first thing you should know is that threats, discriminatory or hateful language and the release of personal information may be illegal and it often violates most platforms terms of services and you can report these accounts and they should be removed. However, there are plenty of unmoderated sites where threats and the release of personal information are amplified and spread, which is why you should take the following actions to protect yourself online and in the field. First, add two-factor authentication to all of your social media and email accounts. Google it, it's very easy and you can read our handout for more information. Screenshot, block, and report concerning messages to the platforms. If you suspect an account is a bot or suspicious, any post or message directed at you from those accounts seems strange or concerning in any way, you should screenshot it, block it, and make sure the platform knows about that account. Make all of your social media profiles private. If you prefer not to make your social media private, you should at least consider not posting any identifying information about your day-to-day -day activities. Be sure to deactivate location and photo geotagging functions. If you ever begin to receive a large number of notifications on Twitter, you can turn off your DMs, you can mute your notifications, turn them off your phone. On Facebook, you can remove your name, email, and phone number from search and limit those who can message you. But let's go a bit deeper now on each of the major platforms. First, on Twitter. Our recommendations are you go in your account settings, make sure you have two-factor authentication so you can verify all login requests and you can flag anyone who's trying to get into your account. In your privacy and safety settings, make sure you turn off your location settings. This prevents you from accidentally leaking your location through your Twitter statuses. Turn off photo tagging so random troll accounts can't tag you on harassing content turn off discoverability by email or phone. On Facebook, you may wanna consider changing your settings to remove yourself from search results. Change your friend settings so only friend requests can come from people in your network, friends of yours, or you can turn them off completely. Change your settings so that only your friends can see your current posts. When you want to post something for work or anything that you wanna make public, you can set the individual posts to be public. You can also go online to learn how to protect your past Facebook timeline posts. Go through your Twitter, go through your profile information and make sure your phone number and email are set to be viewed by only you on Facebook. Remove featured photos or any private information in your about section in your profile. Check all your Facebook privacy settings. Third, LinkedIn. Professional connections can also be at risk. So please disable your public visibility of your profile in your settings on LinkedIn. There are a lot of great resources out there. The Nonpartisan Voter Protection Hotline, 866-OUR-VOTE, can support with resources around voting locations, problems, and any questions. But obviously, always call 911 if there's an actual major threat. The Democratic Party of Georgia's Voter Protection Hotline can answer questions, 888-730-5816. Fair Fight's website, peachvote.com, has a ton of voting resources and more information about threats and intimidation in the question section on that webpage lots of nonpartisan materials and background information. Also, it's critical to remember, don't amplify disinformation. That means no retweeting, no reposting, even to debunk, because any reposting will boost these posts with the platform's algorithms and mean more people will see them. Instead of reposting to debunk, just share good information about voting and elections. Do not interact with bad actors online or in real life. Online harassers and bullies out in the field are just like schoolyard bullies. They want you to react and acknowledge the harassment. So engaging them actually further motivates them to escalate the harassment. So if you notice that some accounts are being especially persistent, screenshot them and report them. Report any specific threats to law enforcement immediately. Both online threats and in-person threats are illegal. 
First, if you are a position where you receive specific incredible threats, especially ones involving in individual people's addresses and locations, report them to law enforcement immediately. And don't be concerned that law enforcement may not be able to trace them or find the people responsible. Report them and create that record of it as soon as you can and include the date, time, and the situation they were received. Second, if you're dealing with an immediate threat at a polling location or during civic engagement activities, you should call 911. To the poll workers, elections officials, canvassers, campaigners, activists, and everyone working to keep our democracy moving for this runoff, Fair Fight says thank you. Let's not let these folks hiding away try to disrupt our civic engagement process or dampen our spirits. We can do this.